members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, parents and grandparents, family, friends, and the entire Hamilton College community. Good afternoon. To you, class of 2020, my fellow college alumni, great afternoon to you. Welcome back to the Hill and congratulations. I'm deeply honored to be here with you today as your baccalaureate speaker. It's great to be back. This feels like coming home. Now I have a confession to make, I'll admit it. After President Whitman invited me, I did a little dance. And no, I did not post it. And no, it was nothing like the moves of the Hamilton Heat. Speaking of dancing, I have another admission. I'm actually a little bit jealous of you. Let me explain. I think it's terrific that you're back and all of this is happening for you. You deserve it. It's been a rough couple of years. But I am jealous that you are getting a graduation do-over. I just wish I could get a do-over on that C I got in elementary dance. Like, who gets a C in elementary dance? How hard could it have been? But in the spirit of Hamilton, we are Hamilton. No half-stepping for our professors, not even on the requirements for a dance class. My fellow alums, two years ago, pandemic, lockdowns, travel bans, and virtual funerals altered almost every aspect of our lives, upended our normal routines and rituals, and for a time canceled most of our cherished traditions, including the celebratory commencement events you had earned and deserved. Through tearful goodbyes to your professors, your friends, and your crushes, from what I hear, as one alum described it, you pulled together a makeshift senior week and then hurriedly left campus. This while worried about your dreams for the future and whether, whether there would be any future at all. Undeterred, however, resilient, and as the Hamilton critical thinkers and doers you are, Many of you already are pursuing careers in interests bound to change the world. And here's why. Let's face it. There's something about this college that is unparalleled. Maybe it grows in the Route Glen walking trails. But there is something special in the way Hamilton nurtures the pursuit of knowledge, plants the seeds of entrepreneurship, irrigates the spirit of innovation blooms lifelong friendships and every year yields an annual bounty of new graduates eager to go out in the world and answer a call to service greater than the self. There have been many names given to this time we are in. Among them, the great resignation, the great reimagination, the great racial reckoning, the great reset. We are in a time of reset. Think about it. In your own lives, you had to finish your last semester of college online, you received your diplomas, but some of you had to delay research projects or change fellowships where you were, where you were headed to one country but had to pivot to another country and faced many, many other challenges where you may have felt you couldn't catch a break. But guess what? Resets are a natural part of life. Resets are about renewal and finding the next chapter. I'm here to share that your resets aren't over and they shouldn't be over. As a matter of fact, my own life has been full of them. I'm in a reset now. I'm about to embark on a new phase of my career, and I'm excited. So think of resets as opportunities to give and grow, and in those resets, 
are many lessons and guiding principles. In those resets, you can find your purpose, your passion, and your place in the world. I'm here to share three stories about resets. The first one I've written about before, but I thought it was important to share with you. My own reset started early. I was seven years old when I left Haiti to begin my life in America. America to me was the land of shiny pennies and frilly dresses I would receive before I came. In my young mind, I viewed my arrival as a chance to get more bags of pennies and pretty dresses. I had no sense of the incredible highs, like being here with you today, and the challenges, large and small, my life in the US would bring. I also spent part of my childhood in Montreal with a wonderful aunt who was really more like a mother to me. So all these changes early in my life made sometimes for a confusing upbringing. I had a tough time making friends, adjusting. I struggled to learn English and express myself. When I would get up to speak in class, the words in my mouth felt as thick as molasses. These days, when I stumble on a word or two when I speak, I remind myself that molasses, it's not just thick, it's also sweet. So I focus on the sweetness and carry on with my message. Wherever your resets take you, embrace them. Keep going. Don't stop. Think of a reset as that patch of turbulence you hit on a plane. Buckle up. Get through it. This too shall pass. Understand that a reset is also a time to know yourself. Sounds familiar? Know thyself, after all, is the Hamilton motto. My reset story of knowing who I am is in two parts. First, my father. My father worked the evening shift at a factory job that made and repaired airplane parts. He was many wonderful things and a dedicated news watcher. In high school, I'd wait up for him on some nights so we could watch the late news programs. He'd sip a cup of hot chocolate or oatmeal mom left him on the kitchen table as we debated the day's events. Although I went to a fancy journalism school after I left Hamilton, my father, who did not have the opportunity to go to college, was in fact my first journalism instructor. Whenever he saw something on television that was derogatory about black people and that did not represent our lives and our values, he would say, this is not who we are. This is not who you are. Know who you are. He taught me to take pride in my roots and my history. He never failed to remind me that the Haitian Revolution changed the world or to note the collective work ethic of our working class suburban New York Haitian immigrant community and the values he and my mother instilled in me and my siblings that have shaped and carried me through the best and worst moments of my life. Ours was not a community with high powered jobs and titles, but along with my parents and loving family members, those nurses, nurses assistants, housekeepers, hospital orderlies, social workers, bus and taxi drivers, restaurant workers, churchgoers, and others gave me breath and wind as I reset to go to college. When I arrived at Hamilton, I carried not only a trunk full of stuff, I also carried the hopes of my parents and dreams of a community who knew some dreams are only possible in America. But it wasn't long, as some of you may have experienced, before I was feeling isolated, alienated, trying to figure out where I belonged and how I belonged at Hamilton. It was during that period the legendary writer and poet Dr. Maya Angelou came to speak at Hamilton. That day she gave me my second lesson on knowing who I am. After her presentation, I eagerly waited in line to speak to her. After I introduced myself, the conversation went something like this. Are you from Haiti? She asked in that rich voice that lets you know you are in the presence of greatness. Yes, I replied, probably shaking that she was even speaking to me. 
Have you read Masters of the Dew, she said. No, I said, I'd never heard of it. You need to read it. Know your story. You need to know who you are. You need to know about yourself. Masters of the Dew, I would learn, is a classic novel written by 20th, 20th century Haitian author Jacques Roumain. Even before meeting her here, Dr. Angelou's writing had, had felt to me like a personal invitation to my spirit for the emotion it evoked in me. I had wished I could write like her and maybe make people feel the way she made me feel with her words. So there I was, feeling like there was not a place for me here, yet it is here, here at Hamilton, that I met someone I greatly admired, like my father who had stressed the importance of knowing my own story, knowing who I am. I read wonderful books here, made great friends here, and here also I had many resets. Dr. Angelou provided a moment, a reset, that helped me define my own narrative which ultimately prepared me for my journalism career. My interaction with her changed me and how I saw myself. It let me know that wherever I was, I belonged. Think back to your own time at Hamilton, and time and time again you will rediscover the discoveries that Hamilton College made possible. Two decades later, as a CNN journalist, I found myself at Dr. Angelou's house in Winston-Salem, Winston North Carolina, producing an interview with her. And she was still teaching, still sharing. I can still remember her yellow house with its yellow fence, her many awards, her sprawling garden, the picture of her and Oprah on a living room table. Most of all, I remember her wisdom. Several years after her death, her wisdom still resonates in my heart. Graduates, Believe you will find people along your life path to help you reset, be open to them. They could help you know who you are, help you get back up, even when you get knocked down. Someone once asked me, after looking at my name, whatever happened to names like Beth or Sue? Sigh, just breathe, yeah. That happened. The implication was that I was other, different. Don't let others define you. If anything like that ever happens to you, remember who you are and hit your reset button. Resets are difficult and sometimes overwhelming and can feel very scary. I decided to become a journalist during my first year at Hamilton. Within months of arriving on campus, I joined the student protest for the college to divest from South Africa, which was then under white minority rule. That activism ignited a spark in me to chronicle important events of our time. The desire to do so has taken me to many parts of the world to hear and, and let out the voices of people and understand that the world is interconnected in times of crisis, natural disasters, political unrest, and the other life events we hear about every day. I went from an internship writing obituaries and local profiles at the Observer Dispatch here in Utica, while still at Hamilton, to covering the White House and many other career highs. However, I still consider the interview I did with Denzel Washington in 2008 my crime crowning journalistic achievement. I was starstruck. I don't think I was very coherent at all during the interview, but I still consider it my best work. As we have all witnessed in the headlines of the past couple of years, just these past couple of days has been mentioned here, we are at a time of domestic and global reset. The pandemic, gun violence, terrorism, racial inequality, police misconduct, Ukraine, it can all feel very overpowering, I know. But go out and find your piece of what you want to address. Hamilton has prepared you not only to be good citizens, but great citizens. I pick journalism. You pick where you think you can do your best work and where your best talents lie. I do believe, graduates, that you are uniquely positioned to do some of the greatest achievements of our generation, of your generation, because you are resilient. 
even as you entered college in 2016. It was during a divisive presidential election. Even before you could finish college, you faced a global pandemic. And now, even now, as you return for the graduation you missed, you are again under a climate of unrelenting gun violence and hate. But guess what? We need you, class of 2020. The country needs you. The world needs you. We need you to be braver than you have ever been, to tackle the issues that we have yet to tackle. We need your collective sense of justice to help this country live up to its ideals. We need you to protect women's rights and autonomy. We need you to keep this country on its march to racial and eco economic equality. But I know that you can. I know that you can do it. You are Hamiltonians. You are Hamily. Know that you are prepared. And I am certain all of us in this room and those watching you virtually, all of us know that we will benefit from the virtues you will bring, not just for your generation, but for the next. The incoming class of 2026 will be looking to your class. We'll be looking to you, class of 2020. The world will be looking to you to reshape it. The world needs your moral authority. We may yet rewrite and reset the promise of America as one house standing together indivisible. I want to leave you with this. Eternal sage, poet, philosopher, Khalil Gibran wrote, your house is your larger body. It grows in the sun and sleeps in the stillness of the night. And it is not dreamless. Does not your house dream? I encourage you to ask yourselves, what is the house you dream of building for the world and in the world? Whom and what will it shelter? What stories will you tell at the dinner table to your family, knowing that the home sets the course for the future? What words will you speak? Class of 2020, you are the class of the great reset in the world. So reset. Go out and start resetting. Reset to bring a season of innovation. Reset to bring about change. Reset to build on the things that already work. Reset and illuminate the world. Whatever may be your light, your light of God, your light of genius, your light of care, your light of compassion, your light of empathy, your light of love, the light that can move mountains, find it and follow it. Don't be afraid to dance, even badly, to your wins and sidestep the setbacks. And when things get hard, just remember to hit the reset button. Thank you and congratulations.